You're just in time for your This is taking too long. We can't let salt upon wounds escape. I'm going to find a way around. God willing, we will finish this together.
Jahta. We warned you at Syracuse, and you persisted. You took advantage of us at New Canaan to drive us out. And like the dogs of Caesar you are, you followed us to Zion. And now you stand on holy ground, a temple to God's glory on Earth. The only use for an animal in our temple is sacrifice. Kale Wachene conserva O. You understand me, don't you? Don't you? Out man. Kuna man, mad. He kill all white legs. You talk. You stop. You can no ni kumpa me. They are you. Same end he would have met if he had died on his knees. But I suppose this was for the sake of the dead horses and sorrows. Still, thanks to your help and the grace of God, the White Lakes won't be troubling Zion anymore. Let's go find Daniel. Tomorrow will be here soon enough, and there is much to do. That should have been avoided. And so it was that the conflict between the New Canaanites and the White Legs was finally resolved. The Courier's involvement had tipped the scale, shifting the fragile balance of power. Despite their defeat at Three Marys and the death of their war chief, the White Legs were determined to pursue the other New Canaanites. But when they finally tracked down their prey in Colorado, they discovered the tables had been turned. The White Legs who survived the new Canaanites ambushes were hunted down by dead horses before they could reach the safety of the Great Salt Lake. When word of the White Legs' diminished numbers reached the 80s tribe, war was declared. And by year's end, the White Legs had been wiped out. The Sorrows fought beside Joshua Graham and the dead horses, eradicating the threat the White Legs posed to Zion. When the Courier and Joshua Graham felled salt upon wounds, their victory was celebrated with a great feast. The Sorrow's transformation from a peaceful, timid tribe into a proud and warlike people broke Daniel's heart. He tried to take solace in the knowledge that they would remain in Zion, but it was a small comfort. The Sorrow's innocence was lost. Having helped eradicate the White Legs from Zion, the Dead Horses returned to Dead Horse Point in triumph. They remained neutral toward the Sorrows, but as years went on, there were periods of competitive friction, even violence between the tribes. The new Canaanites, Daniel especially, intervened regularly as mediators, but found it difficult to reconcile the tribes' conflicts. The defeat of the White Legs in Zion marked a turning point in the fortunes of the Happy Trails Caravan Company. Every two months, the caravan met with the new Canaanites in Zion Valley to trade. Happy Trails soon returned to prosperity. The vigilance of the sorrows and dead horses in defending southwestern Utah, initially startling to Happy Trails caravans, 
soon proved a blessing. The tribes united against the 80s, driving them back from Highway 50, and thus opening yet another trading route for Happy Trails caravans. Though the courier had stopped Joshua Graham from executing salt upon wounds, the war chief still fell in battle. The White Legs defeated at Three Marys, Joshua led the sorrows and dead horses intending to their comrades and burning the corpses of their foes. He continued to advocate militant opposition to the enemies of New Canaan and showed little quarter to those he fought. And yet he was changed. He no longer reveled in the brutality and cruelty for which he had been known in his former life. His inner demons, if not extinguished, were at the least appeased. For years after the defeat of the White Legs, Daniel did his best to minister to the Sorrow's spiritual needs. Try as he might, he could not hold back the tribe's increasing militancy and reverence of Joshua Graham. Demoralized, he returned to his family and Dead Horse Point. His failures haunted him for the rest of his days. And with that, the courier walked out of the history of the tribes of Zion and back to the gathering storm of the Mojave Wasteland.